Hey gang, it's Paul with Stipac. Welcome back to the channel. Today, we're gonna scrape the popcorn ceilings or acoustical ceilings in this project. There are a lot of videos on YouTube about it. We're gonna show you how Stipac scrapes. A few things that always come up. Number one, asbestos. Is there asbestos in my acoustical ceiling? This house was built in 1981. We've already had it tested because we did the back of the house. It turned out negative, so we're good to go. B, does hot water help? I've actually tried hot water. It does not help and it turns the house into a sauna, so we're gonna use cold water. And then Roman numeral number three, today is the owner's birthday. He hates this stuff, so our birthday present to him is gonna be no more popcorn in your house. So happy birthday, Mr. Homeowner. I got here a little earlier. I removed this ceiling fan. I removed the light fixture from the laundry room. There was a little bit of crown left. I took it all down because I wanna be able to scrape the ceiling back all the way to the wall because we don't know whether we're putting crown back or not. Back here in the living room, I pulled the smoke detector down. We'll protect that with plastic. And this ceiling fan is not really gonna be in my way, so we'll just cover that with plastic. And then I pulled down all the AC grills. I just tossed them, they're old and rusted. Did you know you can get aluminum ones now that won't rust? That's pretty cool. Somebody finally thought of an aluminum AC grill. Speaking of AC grills, the owners have always complained that this side of the house was always like warm in the summer, cold in the winter. Now this house has one AC system. The there's only one return air grill. It's at the end of this hallway. So all the air from this side of the house has to go through this doorway, which is always open. We just have it closed for construction and it gets recirculated. But one thing we noticed is that all the vents are near the core of the house. In other words, the air is being dumped right here in the core and is getting pulled back to the return air grill. So in the dining room, it used to be like right here. So I have to put a new one in because we reframed all this and the ductwork was in our way. So I'm gonna put it right here in front of the window. That way that nice cold air, that warm air gets dumped out right here and gets pulled across to the return air. In the kitchen, the same thing. The ductwork was in our way when we installed this big beam. So I'm just gonna move this one right here in front of the window and the air is gonna get pulled across the kitchen into the return air. This one is really too close to the wall. It could stay, but I don't like the way that looks. And it's easy to extend this one over here into this bay. Same thing, the air will dump out here, get pulled all the way across. So that leaves us these two in the living room. And come see what I found in this one, Jordan. Look what's in there. There's a siren. There's a siren from an alarm system. I don't know if that's part of a previous system or part of the new system, but we're gonna have them come out anyway because we have to relocate the alarm control panel. So I'm gonna have them relocate this and that's gonna help. That's blocking that one like 80%. And the other thing in this room, since I'm moving those three, do I wanna move these two? Should I move those two to this plane of the ceiling? If you're an AC guy, let me know in the comments. So I could put a diffuser on them that directs the air horizontally across the ceiling and then it's going to roll down and get pulled into the hallway return air but let me know what you think in the comments below and while we're on the subject of relocating things why don't you grab that mouse relocate it to the like button smash that one for us consider subscribing if you're enjoying the content and right now all we have to do we're going to move this furniture over there hang some plastic and start scraping these ceilings let's get to it
Alrighty gang, that ceiling is scraped. Came out pretty good. We caught the majority of that popcorn in that trash can as Jordan was following me along, or I was following Jordan along. How much you think we caught in there, bud? I'd say 75%. Yeah, probably more, maybe more. Maybe. And that stuff's heavy too, right? It is. So we've tried the plastic on the floor. What's happened to us is the ladder tears it, then the floor's a mess anyway. And picking all that plastic up with that heavy material, it rips. We've tried thicker plastic, but it's just a slippery mess on the floor. It gets all over our shoes, so we didn't like it. We tried this and it's okay. But in the kitchen, we're gonna try something different. We are gonna put plastic on the floor. We're gonna put it right here. Let this section fall on the plastic and then roll it up while we are always working off of the concrete so we're not stepping in that. So why don't we put this plastic down and give it a whirl. Give it a shot. All right. Alrighty guys, we are done with the scraping. Every time I do this, I promise myself, this will be the last time you ever have to scrape a ceiling, Paul, because next time you're gonna hire it out, but here we are. Or I say, next time you're gonna hire a suck truck to suck out all the blown in insulation, rip down all the sheetrock and just replace it. But again, here we are scraping a ceiling. And I gotta tell you, I hate doing that shit. So, so we tried a few methods. We didn't protect this floor. We let it fall in the can. We caught most of it, but there was still a lot of cleanup. And we're gonna get this floor spotless before we leave. But we didn't put plastic there. We did use plastic here, and you can't even tell the difference where we used plastic and where we didn't. And then that stuff just gets all over your light, or our light, and the vacuum, the extension cord, the hoses, it gets everywhere. So you just have to decide what you wanna do in your situation. Do you wanna spend an afternoon doing it yourself, getting that stuff all over you, all over your shoes, all over your precious hats? Or do you wanna spend major bucks and have somebody else come in and do that, or even more dollars and have somebody come in and remove everything, like the drywall, and then reinstalling it? I mean, putting this drywall back, for us, would be a real pain. We'd have to run a drywall lift and do all that. To remove the drywall just to get rid of the popcorn, to me, is an extreme measure in such a large area. But on the bright side, it's done. This side has dried, it looks great. All we have to do, one more mop in this area and it's spotless. And then we're out of here and we'll see you guys tomorrow. Alrighty gang, it's the next day. We have mentally recovered from scraping that acoustical or that popcorn on the ceilings. I'm not quite physically recovered yet. My neck's still a little jacked up, but I'll be all right. So it came out great. I will say there are a lot of nail pops up here several cracks in the butt joints. We're gonna fix all that. And what I'm thinking of doing, I've always wanted to try those new skimming blades. I don't know if they're new, but they're new to me. I've recently seen them. You can get a 32 inch wide blade by level five, that's the manufacturer, and make a pass on that drywall and skim coat that whole thing nice and perfect with some nice soft topping compound. 
That's the plan anyway. Let me know if you've used those before and how they work. I'd really appreciate knowing how they work and if I need to invest in some. So today we're gonna to start doing a little bit of electrical to get ready for our electrician on this permitted project. Now, one thing I like to do is what I call scatter the boxes. So what I mean by scattering the boxes is we're simply gonna place all these where we want them. We're actually gonna nail them to the studs. So when they get here, all they have to do is run wire. We don't have to discuss where all the boxes go. And then it's also gonna give us and the owners an opportunity to see where all the boxes are and where all the switches are and maybe make a change before the electrician gets here. So let me show you over here what I did this morning. I set up my Bosch line laser. It's a GLL100G. I've got it set on our HUPAR mount that we did a whole video on. And it's lined up all the way over there on an existing switch. And it's projecting this line that determines all our other switches. That way all our switches are exactly level. Because if we come in here and measure off this floor for some of them and off of this slab for the others, they're not gonna be the same. I like to set boxes with a laser. That's just how Stud Pack does it. So we're gonna start right here on this corner and there's our first one. So I've got the center line marked on the stud and I've also got it marked on the box. Some box manufacturers have a mark on the boxes as the center line. I wish they all did that. So all we're gonna do, line up those two marks and nail them off. And uh, you may be wondering about this piece of plywood there. That's gonna center this box between here and here. I think this is gonna become a focal point of this room and I want this box in the middle. Five minutes to put that in, well worth it. So let's start putting up these boxes. All right, we're back. It's a gloomy day here at Stud Pack Studios. That's because it is pouring today. And it's a great day to be inside. We're gonna finish up some of this electrical, get these lights back on so we can see and the owners can see. I get a lot of questions in the comments wondering if I'm a licensed electrician and I am not. I'm gonna tell you a little bit about my story. So the first 20 years of my career, I was director of maintenance at a commercial facility and we had electrical contractors do all our work for us, of course. And I got to watch them and a lot of times I got to help them. Now, mind you, this was 30 years ago. Couldn't do that today. But we did things like take four inch IMC. IMC is intermediate metallic conduit, and they would bend it into concentric bends. And then we replaced a 2000 amp disconnect that got destroyed by lightning. And another day, I'll never forget, we had this obsolete switch gear that you couldn't get parts for, you couldn't get breakers for it, but we had to install two 200 amp three phase breakers. So we bought some quarter by one inch bus bar and bent it into the shape we needed to connect to the bus bar and connect to that breaker and make that system work. So a lot of what I just talked about is something only a commercial electrician is gonna know about. So if you Sparkies could get down in the comments below and help me explain it in layman terms, I would really appreciate that. So after that job, we moved to Southern California where I got my general contractor's license. I soon learned that the chief electrical inspector in our county taught a class at the local college on the National Electric Code. If you took his class and you passed it, he would sign off on your own electrical work. In other words, a general contractor could do their electrical work in that county if you took this course and passed it. That's what I did, and I did my own electrical work for years in that county, and I never had a failed electrical inspection. I'm really proud of that. So then we moved to Southern Louisiana, and there is no middle ground. I cannot do my own electrical work as a general contractor, but I can go down to a home center, or I can send my 16-year-old son down to the home center and we can buy anything we want electrically, but legally we can't install it. That's like telling me, you can go to the grocery store and buy all the food you want, but you can't go home and cook it for somebody because you're not a certified chef. So all I'm saying is, I wish there was a way for guys like me to get certified to install Romex in a residential building. That's all I'm asking for. Should be pretty easy, but it's not. Then we wouldn't have to get an electrician over here to do something that I can do. It'd be like asking a chef to come over to your house to cook a chicken. So just like when we have plumbers on site, 
running pipe outside, we'll do all the digging beforehand and get everything lined up for them. So when they show up, all they gotta do is run pipe. It's the same thing with the electrician. We're gonna get all these wires sorted out. So when they show up next week, they can just start running wires. So let me take you over here and show you what we got going. The last thing an electrician wants to see when they come to a project the first time is Romex hanging down from everywhere. Nothing's labeled. They don't know what's on and what's off. We actually did a video. We'll put a link right here on what to do before you even start a construction project at your house. So at a minimum, everything's coiled up, capped off and labeled with the circuit number, just like that. And you also need to at least have in your mind what you want. I want this cable feeding this and feeding that. And I want that circuit feeding this. But for right now, let's head over there and we're going to show you what we're going to be doing right now. So we're over here at the stud pack that's holding up our 18 foot beam. And if you remember, there was a little bit of a wing wall here that was supposed to remain on the drawings, but Jordan and I decided it would look better if that were gone. But there was a switch here, a three-way switch for the foyer. So we just pulled it out and coiled it up out of our way until we were all done with this framing. Then this morning I got in here and I relocated it right here so we can get that lighting circuit back on for the owners. So that is done. And then down here, we had this Romex going through the old corner of that wall feeding a receptacle in this bedroom. We had to pull that out to put all our new framing in. And I just had that wire coiled up right here. Several of you commented that I should just put a plug here. We absolutely agreed. Awesome comment, awesome idea, because all the receptacles that were in these load bearing walls are now gone. We need as many as we can in this project. So I mounted the box right here in line with the switch. Here's our feed. Now all we're gonna do is run a piece of Romex from this box to that receptacle in that bedroom and get that circuit back on for these owners. Let's get it done. Dad, that wire came out of the wall by itself. Does that happen every time? Of course, every time. It comes right out. You don't have to fish it or anything. It's magic. All right, the breaker's back on. Our tester shows it's all okay. So we're done over here. That wasn't too bad. We were able to get the power back on to this side of the house. That was really important for the owners and for us. So now let's take you over here and show you what we're really talking about as far as getting this place ready for the electrician. So come on up here and you see four pieces of Romex and the doorbell wire that all used to be in the attic. Now that we've raised this ceiling, now they're all in the dining room. We got to get them back in the attic. So what we're going to do, we're going to disconnect those three wires from this two gang box on the other side of this wall, drill a hole in the new top plate at the nine foot height, refeed those wires and hook them back up in that same two gang box. And these other two, the doorbell and that other piece of Romex, we're going to show you that also. So let's get the buzz saw and start cutting some drywall. <laughs>
All right, that looks so much better having all those wires up above our ceiling and behind our wall. It's gonna make it so much easier for everybody. And remember, I'm gonna put staples in all this and the nail plates or nail stoppers, whatever you call them in your part of the country. We're gonna show you all that. We didn't get into too many details on this electrical work. It was a little hard to combine scraping popcorn and electrical in the same video. It's just how this project was the last couple of days. That's what we had to do. So we put them together, but stay tuned because in the next video, we are gonna go into a deep dive on this electric. We're gonna show you every detail, every trick we know as we work our way clockwise around this project and get all this electrical above the walls, above the ceilings and ready for our electricians. So if you like the video, go outside, get your garden hose, spray all that popcorn off your like button, smash it for us, subscribe if you haven't already, get down below in the questions and comments, leave us a comment, ask a question, and we'll see you on the next one.